Coming up, I finish off my Create Mega Factory that automatically generates and crafts all of the items I'll ever need to craft Create stuff. Let's create a Create Factory. I need it. In fact, we're already halfway through building one. We built all of this in the last episode and this produces me a whole bunch of items that are on this wall here. It doesn't produce all of them, however. We still need to produce a whole bunch of those. But before we get into that, there's a little bit of a problem, and that's that we're very low on diorite. As you can see from my inventory, although we've got a few chip variants, we've only actually got 250 odd left. And I do have a farm for diorite, which is over at the snowy area. Um, oh, what, where's the, what? Where's the other half of this truck and why is it sideways? That's slightly concerning. No, they're both there. Okay, I guess that's just a visual glitch then. That's fine. Right, over to the snowy area. And this here is the snowy area, which still technically needs a name. It's like a ski resort, but it's also got factories. It produces a whole bunch of stuff. There's a farm over there. And the reason that I haven't given it a name is because I was relying on comments. And most of the comments were suggesting like Foxy something or other or something Fox. And I don't like calling things after my own name. So I'd like something unique and different. Anyway, these factories produce all sorts of things, including diorite and andesite and granite. And that's all done in this little process over here. And as you can see, we're producing diorite there, we're producing andesite there, and we're producing granite there. And all of those things get taken down underground into this storage system here, they get sent through here, and then they get picked up by a train which takes them to our storage system. But as you can see from this chunk loading map, none of the chunks in this area are force loaded anymore. And the reason for that is because it's such a big area, it was just getting all kinds of laggy and just slowing down the rest of the server. And to be honest, most of the things that we're making here I've got in bulk. Apart from diorite now, because we've used all of that. So that means we need a little diorite farm setting up over here, and we can do that because we're bringing in andesite and quartz, which are still being produced at other factories that are still loaded, so we shouldn't run out. The other ingredient of this farm that wasn't fully automatable was blaze powder, and that's what we're using to produce redstone. And the way we're producing redstone is by basically turning blaze powder into potions of strength and then squirting it onto cinder flour. And that all works really well, but like I said, the blaze powder is not renewable which means i need to go to a blaze farm afk there for a while gather a bunch of the blaze powder and then bring it into the system but thanks to you guys in the comments i've got a new way of doing that that doesn't involve adding any more mods or anything like that which should be really easy but we are going to need to go to the nether before we get carried away going over to the nether though, I just want to explain this factory again. The idea is that we're producing every single component that I require to then be able to just craft any of the create stuff that I need. For example, if I wanted gearboxes, I'll be able to because we've got loads of shafts and cogs. Likewise, if I wanted fans, we'll have propellers and we'll have all of the casing and the ingredients for that. If I need brass tunnels and funnels, we'll have plenty of these electron tubes and plenty of brass and plenty of dry kelp and things like that so i'm not aiming to actually produce the actual items like copper tanks and pipes but i am aiming to have all of the ingredients that i need in order to be able to craft those really quickly and so in order to help me along i made a little list here with all of the things that we still need to get so hopefully by the end of today we'll have all of these things in place and a nice big factory for them all to live in but before we can do any of that we need to sort this blaze powder system out which does mean going off to the nether over at the fortress farm i'm reminded that this thing's actually a pretty good blaze farm as well and as a result of that we've got a ridiculous amount of blaze rods already in the system 75,000 of them which means if we crushed all of those down we'd have over 300,000 blaze powder which is probably more than we'd ever use in terms of turning it into redstone but that still means that our redstone is not renewable because eventually that could run out and that means someone would have to come here in afk and load in some more and the other thing about this is none of this is actually connected to my storage system. And hopping back to the new area quickly, in the last episode we put a lot of time and effort into making these quantum bridges in order to transfer all of our items from our storage systems wirelessly to our main storage system. So I really should get one of those set up for the nether as well so that we can get all of those items into the system. But back in the nether that's a job for later on. Right now I need to explore the nether a bit to find another fortress in order to steal a blaze spawner. 
And it looks like there's something interesting over there, but I don't think it's a blaze spawner, but I want to check it out. That is in that direction, so let's go for a little fly across the nether and see what we can discover. <laughs> What I've discovered is another fortress, which is very convenient. So I guess I need to fly around here and try and find myself a blaze spawner. I'm sure there can't be one too far away. Right now, though, there's a chest with bombs in it. I'll take the bombs. Thanks very much. And it looks like just down this corridor here, we've got ourselves a little blaze spawner. So that's good. Hey, hey, I'm trying to get this blaze spawner. Stop it. Will you guys stop? I'm trying to make more plates and waystones here, guys, because you're making it very difficult for me. So I need a warp plate and a waystone. And we're going to call this temporary fortress. I'm going to use this to hop back to the new area. And I guess this new area needs a name as well, because it's not exactly new anymore. And I don't think we're going to be here too much longer. But before we get carried away with calling things names, I need to put another warp plate down here. So let's just chuck that there. Let's take the attune shard out of that. And back over at the temporary fortress with all of these blazes, I can put that shard into there, pick up this blaze spawner, and then just hop back through with it. Just like that. And now we've got a blaze spawner here, which is probably going to cause us a lot of problems. So I better get away from it for now. So back at this temporary fortress, I want to find that thing that we saw and figure out what it is. And it's just down there, apparently. So maybe it is actually part of the fortress. Although getting to it looks like, ah, oh, there's another blaze spawner there. That'll come in useful maybe at some point. It definitely seems to be within the bounds of the fortress. And it is, oh, okay, we got a little piglin camp. Hello, little piglin. What's going on at your little camp? Have you got any chests? No, you've got nothing at all, just a pile of gold. Well, in that case, I won't disturb you. I'll leave you to it. And I'm going to head back with this other blaze spawner. And, um, yeah, then we'll have two of them, I guess. We'll just take that. Thank you very much. I'll see you later, buddy. So now I have two blaze spawners over here and a whole bunch of blazes to help me run this factory. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate the help. But um, if you could not be so helpful right now, that I'd really appreciate that because you're going to end up setting everything on fire. And I don't really want it on fire. So do you know what? I think we... Oh, I picked up the... I picked up a blaze. I've never had a blaze before. I've got a blaze. Oh, this is lovely. Hello, little blaze. Um, hmm. I'm going to take that and run away somewhere where I'm not going to load it. Let's just stick it down here for now and let's go and get the other one. Then we can tidy all of this fire up. Right, and now we just need to deal with our factory workers in the best way possible. You should have joined a union, guys. Well, now look what's happened to you. You've both been fired. Get it? Because it's blaze fired. Fired? No. Okay, jeez. Oh, my brass casings fell out. So why do we need those blaze spawners? Well, in my hand, I have some empty blaze burners. And let's just pretend this is the blaze spawner. If you click on one of those with an empty blaze spawner, it puts a blaze inside of it. And then if you put that blaze burner through some crushing wheels, you get blaze powder, cinder flour, and iron back. And that means we can put a deployer down with some empty blaze burners next to a blaze spawner. That can be constantly filling those with blazes and then dropping them into some crushing wheels. And that's how we can automate blaze powder. However, the problem with this this is that if we've got a blaze spawner somewhere where I'm working, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of blazes around, a whole bunch of fire, and I don't really want to have to deal with that. And whilst I could use that to actually generate as even more blaze rods and blaze powder, I don't really want to have to faff about with any of that. And speaking of problems, we are now 100% out of diorite, which means the rest of the farms are starting to slow down. So we should really address that first after I've had a nap, because it's bedtime. And now that I'm all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you don't have a tail. Oh yeah, well, uh, now that I'm all bright-eyed, we should probably put a second floor on this factory so that we can start getting these other things in place. And for that, I'm going to be using a combination of eroded tuff and some stone and some eroded andesite maybe as well just to give it a little bit of texture and we're going to be just plonking that basically up on top of this thing because i still don't know what this factory is going to look like yet so i don't really want to start building that so first of all i'm going to use the trowel to make a line of those like that and get rid of that and then i'm going to use this construction wand set to random matching any on left and right restriction and all i need to do is just walk back along one of these and place a bunch of those and see how it looks and i can already see i don't think i like the stone and the andesite in there I think if the patches were a little bit better designed, that would be better. But the randomness of the construction rond hasn't really helped with that at all. And instead, we're going to replace all of those with this sanded tuff because I think that just blends a little bit better. 
I'm going to take away the sort of little bits of the eroded andesite where it's not really in patches. And I think that works a lot better, although I still think that this eroded andesite is probably a little bit bright. However, one thing I need to consider here is how we're going to get our storage drawer network up here, because down here it's just laid underneath the floor, so you can't see it. But if this is only going to be one block thick, it's going to be very visible. So really, I should probably make this two blocks thick. And I actually think this cut tuff, surrounded by the sanded tuff and then the eroded tuff, makes it look a lot more like damp patches than that other stuff. So that's what we're going to go with. So first of all, I'm going to dig away all of this stuff again and replace that. Yeah, that looks loads better like that. I might even add a little bit in this little section here down here. And then I just need to replicate that on the layer above. How oh, hard could it be? And it occurs to me while I'm added in this next layer of this roof that actually I need an air gap in the middle to have our storage drawers in. Otherwise, they're going to be visible from down here. And I don't want that. So I guess I'm going to rip all of this out and do it again. So now this layer's got a little right angle as well. I can actually come underneath the main bit and I'm going to add a few brackets onto these shafts just to make those look like they're actually attached to the roof. I'm going to do it on the pipe as well, but probably not in the same place. And I think something like this should be fine. I don't want too many on the pipes because I think they look a little bit more sturdy than the, than the shaft. And not wanting to go too crazy, I think something like that just is enough to give that a little bit of structure underneath there. And of course, we're going to need lights down here as well, but I'm going to worry about that later. For now, I'm going to rely on these mega torches to stop anything from spawning and worry about the rest of the decoration once the actual building's in place. Right, it's time to get up to this second floor then and start producing some diorite. So I've gone ahead and added a few auto crafters up onto this second layer. You can also see I've put some more shafting going across this thing and I've connected the storage drawers down the side here the power is just coming from this side here and the reason I've added these ones is because these are the only ones that just require one type of item so they're really easy to make you just need a draw controller slave with a smart shoot with the right thing in it then the shape of your crafting and then they can just output back into the draw controller slaves so if I put this shaft on here they should all kick in and we should start making wool shafts and paper as well and that means all of those things are now going into that storage system down there which is fantastic so that's these things done here. The other one I can do is iron bars, but the rest of them all require multiple components. So in order to add a new one, we just need to extend our trim along here, put one of those on there, and then we just need the shape of our crafting. And for this one, it's six items. And what I'm going to do is go around the back and connect all of these things together so that I only need to put items into it in one place. There we go. Then we need a smart shoot on top. We need to tell that that we only want iron ingots bringing out of the system to go in there. And then we can just put another one of these draw controller slaves on there. And then we can use this trim just to bring that all the way up the back and then get that all connected. So now we've got iron bars going in. We just need some power. And I feel like maybe I should have done this a little bit further back so that it's not taking up quite so much room. So I'm just going to take it all to bits again. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it, guys. So adding power for this one's going to be really easy. Although I'm going to do it on this side so that we can put other ones here. We just need a cog there and then break one of those. Stick in a bit of chain drive just there like that and then attach it to there and then spin those round so they're facing the right direction. And there we go. Now we are making iron bars as well. So that's all of the items that only require one ingredient but it's not diorite and that's what I really need next. Now we can actually make diorite using flint and calcite in a press with a basin but the easiest way to do it is just to actually craft it up which is nether quartz and cobblestone which means I'm going to need a 4x4 crafter but this time I need two different ingredients on the diagonals and that means I can't join them all together and I have to put an individual ingredient into each one. So now the problem is that I need more brass funnels because I've completely run out out of them and whilst we are producing everything we need to make them as you can see we've got no brass because that's going into producing everything else that we're making at the moment so that means I need to go back to Hill Valley into my little workshop and produce some more manually so back over at Hill Valley, it suddenly occurred to me that this isn't the area I want to come to at all. I need to be at the snowy area for my little workshop. However, it's kind of handy that I'm over here because I've got a whole bunch of raw copper to actually burn in this burning machine. 
So let's just chuck all of that in the barrel, get it blasted, and that's going to give us a whole bunch more copper, which will come in very useful for making all of that zinky, brassy stuff that we're going to be making. Zinky, brassy stuff? Yeah, well, it's brass made out of zinc and cut. Shut up, leave me alone. So actually back over at the snowy area again inside my hotel and down in the basement, I'm back again to make even more brass. How hard could it be? The system's eating all the zinc as well. I've got some raw zinc. I guess I'm going to go back to Hill Valley and smelt that. So let's just come back to this and then throw that in there. That'll get smelted and then eaten by the system. And by the time I get back to the snowy area, it'll have gone again. So I still won't have any, but this is not ideal at the moment. This new factory is kind of eating everything that I need. But in the long run, it's going to be a good thing, because then I'll have everything I need. Jeez. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is just tell this system to stop eating all of the brass. And I believe it's the presses that's eating it, because we haven't quite got enough of those. So all I need to do is just steal that press for a second. It's not going to make any more of those. And then hopefully we'll get some brass into the system. And while I was waiting for the brass to come in, I just thought I'd get this little thing set up ready. And what it's got is a mechanical arm, which is going to take items off these depots, which are going to come out of these when we've got some more funnels it's going to put them into the funnels in the right places hopefully the craft is going to craft the stuff up and it's just going to go straight back into the storage system i hope and whilst i was building that we've managed to amass a whole three pieces oh, oh look, we get more but it's going out faster than it's coming in or it's getting confused whether to turn it into nuggets or that i guess i'm not sure but anyway that's mine i need it actually i need to put it back in so that i can actually craft the funnels i need to make, craft as many of these as i can before it steals it back 46 That'll do. So of course we're going to need some andesite and some quartz for our filters. And now all I need to do is come up here and get the right things in the right places. So I'm going to disconnect those storage drawers for a second so we don't have any accidents. I'm going to put a funnel on there and a funnel on there. That one's going to have andesite. That one's going to have quartz. And then I need to pick those up. And we only want one at a time coming out. Otherwise it's going to get all sorts of confused. This needs to be on round robin mode. Although I haven't told it where to go yet. So forget that. And I've realized I built this thing too close to everything. So it's not going to work. So let's just delete all of these a minute and all I need to do is just bring it forward one block so there's actually room behind it to put the funnels in so uh, now I've done that we put funnels on the back like that they all need to be input funnels not output funnels so I just need to spin them around with the wrench and I believe we want andesite in there and there and quartz in there and there maybe if that's the right way around andesite andesite quartz quartz oh it's cobblestone not andesite cobble cobble quartz quartz right okay I'm a moron we know so in which case, it's cobble there, cobble there, and then we just need some cobble there instead of the andesite. And now I can grab that mechanical arm back again. And now with the mechanical arm, I can say, pick up from there and there and deposit in all of these. And it should know that it can't put certain things in certain places, so it shouldn't get it wrong. I can pop that back on there. We'll put that into force brown robin mode so it doesn't make any mistakes. And now I just need a little bit of power on this. So now with a few bits of chain drive, some shafts, some gearboxes and some cogs, all of this is powered and this should now be producing us diorite. It is. Now it's not the fastest diorite making machine in the world, but it's going to produce it. And what you've got to remember with this factory is speed doesn't matter. It's always going to be running, which means whenever I use items out of my inventory, it will just replace them over time. And because it's four slow, I don't need to be here. It will just keep running in the background, always keeping stock of all of these things, and eventually we'll get everything we need. Before I do anything else and I forget, I better put that press back on there. And now we can actually start making those brass sheets again. And that's our diorite system done, which means the diorite is now being used for whatever that gets used for. And I believe that's for crafting tough. Yeah, there it goes. It's going in there to do that. So we can move on to the next thing. Diorite done. And iron bars done. So before we get too carried away building everything else in this factory, I'm actually going to go back to the nether and get one of these quantum rings set up so that we can get all of the items out of there and over to our storage facility, which means I need a couple more singularities. And if you don't know how I make a singularity, then I went through that in great detail in my last video. But basically, it entails me getting something out of my inventory that I have way more than I need and then just sticking it into some matter condensers, which are not in this room at all. They're all the way through here and into the brown section, I think, maybe. Yes, the crafting storage room. Just in here. And I, yeah, I forgot I dismantled it all. Oh, I better, I better put it back. 
And the thing I'm going to shove in here today is flint, because I have 4.7 million of it. And I've had a whole bunch of comments from the last video saying instead of pumping items into these matter condensers that I could use water. And yeah, water's free, you can make an infinite water source very easily, but I've also got way more flint than I'll ever need, and that basically means that it's free to just stick all of that in there and it saves me faffing about with pumps and cogs and power sources and all that sort of thing where everything I need is just here. So it's much easier to do it this way. And whilst it might seem slow starting off getting all of the flint into here, as in the number of stored energy doesn't go up particularly quickly, the longer that your export buses are attached to the system and the more acceleration cards they have in, the faster it will actually end up going because it takes a while to warm up. And the other comment I got was, why don't I make stack upgrades and then I can send a stack at a time into the system? And I could do that and that might speed things up slightly, but look how fast that's going into there now. It really doesn't take very long to get these things filled up. And while those things are filling up, I need to go to the roof. Because I need to add on yet another quantum ring into this system. And once the network has booted, that should mean this is online and now we've got still 12 of 16 channels in there that's fine and after just adding that onto the roof the singularities are almost halfway there already which means they're really not going to take very long at all to get finished so i better dash to the nether quickly and get that quantum ring in place over there so that i don't waste too much of my flint as it starts the process again and there we go we've now got a quantum ring in the nether ready for connection to the overworld and all i need to do on this is connect a storage bus to that there and then i can just connect that cable not there i don't want it there thank you i just want it connected to this quantum ring just a little bit maybe i did want it there like that and i was going to put an import bus on here as well to actually drag all of the items out of this but i really don't think we need to we might as well just leave them in there and hopping back over here to check on our singularity process i'm pretty sure they're going to be just about done already which means if i had a faffed about plumbing in water supplies and all that sort of stuff yeah look they're nearly done well it would have taken even longer and now we have two of these we can turn these into quantum entangled singularities with a little bit of TNT and some end of dust, I think it's called, and then um, we'll be good to go. And here's the mess we made earlier, or in the last video, should I say, one of those, one of those, and one of those. Done. And then one of those, and one of those, and another one of those. Done. One of those in there, and the other one in there, and that leaves us two for spares. And now this should connect. It's online. Have we got enough channels? We do. And that should mean now if I go into my inventory, I should have access to all of those things. So let's find out. Yep, 76,000 blaze rods. And if we look at our nuggets of experience, we've got 622,000 of them. If only I could turn that into a fluid and make a big pool of it, that'd be amazing. And that's something else I get an absolute ton of comments about. Why don't I make an infinite XP source like I have done for this lava source here and for the biodiesel source that's a couple of floors below? And the reason is, peeps, unfortunately, you can't pump XP out as a liquid. If you try and do that, it just turns into the XP orbs and you end up picking it up. So we can't just pour XP everywhere and make a big old infinite source of it, which is a shame. But what we can do with it is something a little bit different. And that is to make a block that's quite pretty that I've never built with. And that is the block of experience. And these blocks of experience, which we could craft an absolute ton of and never ever run out of XP by the looks of things, are quite pretty little blocks. I don't know what I would use them for. They make a nice noise. I don't think they do anything. I don't think they give you any XP. XP or help you mend your tools or anything, but they're quite nice. And I believe you can turn those back into nuggets, you can. So that's very useful. In that case, I'm going to go over to the mob farm because I've just had an idea, peeps. What's your idea? I'll tell you in a minute when we get there. Why are you dragging it out? Not dragging it out. I'm just going to the mob farm. Well, you should have cut. You should have done a cut rather than just making us watch. Well, look, we're here now. Got 426,000 of them in there because this is the main area where we're storing them. However, storing them like that is inefficient. So I'm going to remove that box. I'm going to put some compacting drawers there instead. I'm going to take one of those out of there and shove it in. Oh, it's got... Co Why has it got cobblestone? Stop it. No, stop putting, stop putting cobble in it. Trying to get me experience. There we go. 
I would be able to store a whole bunch of them as actual blocks, but I need to get them out of there and into there. So instead, what I'm going to do is just put a smart chute on there and then just grab that and shove it on top of there and those will just eventually get filtered down out of there and hopefully go into there. There's only one way to find out. Yep, they're going in. Excellent. Oh, problem solving. It's not really a problem, is it, having too much experience, but it is nice to compact them down a bit and have them not take up quite so much room in my storage system. Good. Right. Anyway, back on to what we were doing. What were you doing? I don't know. I can't remember. I got busy, distracted doing other things. Are you going to cut this top? Skipping forward in time a little bit, I've added a whole bunch more crafters in here. None of them have got any power, but I believe all of the storage systems are linked up, and I'm going to try and talk you through it the best I can. Also, none of them have got mechanical arms yet, but we'll do that as we go through. So we'll start here. We've got sticks and cobble, which are going to go into the back of these to make us levers. And then we've got something very similar with redstone and sticks to make us redstone torches. On this side here, we've got iron sheet and andesite alloy, which is going to go into the back of this system, and that's going to make us whatever that is. Propellers. And although the crafting recipe for propellers doesn't actually need the corner ones, I've used these crafter slot covers in the corners so that I can link all of these ones up together, and that way I only need to put the iron sheets into one funnel and they should fill the slots rather than having a funnel for each one. And that'll save time with the mechanical crafter having to put iron sheets into four different different funnels and also saves me on some funnels and I've done a very similar trick here with the exact same ingredients again and this one is for the whisks for our mechanical mixers again I've used the corner slots there so that I can link all of those together and link those together and in fact actually on this one we don't even need those corner ones at all they're completely useless so that's all the ones down this side and a bit in the middle over at the back here we've got these ones here which are going to be making cogs from shafts and planks and this one here is going to be making the large cogs from cogs and more planks which is actually a much more expensive way of doing it because you can actually make large cogs from shaft and two sets of planks but it just means the whole thing has to be a bit smaller and it really isn't going to cost us that much more because we've got plenty of those resources and and that leads us to this final one here which is comparators again i've gone for the corner one so i can link the redstone torches ones together just needing one funnel we've got quartz in the middle and stone at the bottom so this just needs another mechanical arm on here putting into all of those and i guess we can plonk that there so now i believe all of those are set up and ready to go they just need power and with this last cog here i think that is everything on this now powered we should be producing all of the things we need to produce there you go you can see we're now making the whisks there we're getting in the comparators coming out there over here we should be getting yeah the propellers don't seem to be getting any redstone torches though oh have i not put you on forced round i have put you on forced round robin so what's your problem all right we'll remove that arm and do it again pick up pick up place place and go forced round robin well now it's working well there we go we're now making redstone torches which is fantastic we're making cogs over here, but I think we're full of cogs, so that stopped. And I think we must be full of big cogs as well, because that stopped. And that's not actually... No, that's not going to work. <laughs> Put the cog in the wrong place. There we go. Now we're making cogs. Small cogs, big cogs. Everything's working. Everything's... But my levers are not producing now. Why is my levers stopped? What are you doing, arms? Okay, try this one again then. Are you going to do it now? It is. Okay, now we're making levers. Excellent. And updating my list, the last few things we need are electron tubes, brass hands, precision mechanisms, crushing wheels, barrels, straws, and in order to make those, we need a bamboo farm. So we're just about there, and we've got a reasonable amount of room left up here to do all of those things. So I'm going to crack on with that and I'll get back to you once I've made some progress. And now we've got a bunch more autocrafters in place. We've got one here doing barrels, and what I've done here is actually made it bigger so that I could extend everything around to join the planks together and the slabs together, so we only have to use two input funnels again. We've got an electron tube system over here, which is pretty simple, and squeezed around the back here, we've got one that's actually doing brass hands, and we, yep, yeah, we've got enough brass to make those, that's good. The only one that I haven't wired up properly yet is this one, which is for crushing wheels, and that's because I think this is going to cause us a bit of a problem. The reason I think it's going to cause a problem is that so far on all of these, we've only had one input funnel per output item, which means the mechanical arms can pick the item up and shove it in the right one. The problem with this one, however, is that the wood that goes in these slots here can't be joined, so we actually need to have a funnel for each one of those. 
which means around the back of this is quite complicated. We've got andesite alloy going in at the top, which is going to go all the way around the outsides. We've got andesite in the middle, which is going to just be for one slot. And then we've got four slots for planks. And I think that means that when I put down this mechanical arm and tell it to pick up from there and put into here, it's going to get all sorts of confused which one it should actually put the planks in because it's going to be picking four planks up at a time and then going, I don't really know where to put those. But we won't know unless we try, so let's link this thing up to the storage system so the items can actually start coming out of those chutes any minute now. There they are. So we've got 16 andesite alloy, four planks and one andesite. And if I tell this arm to pick up from there and put into all of these uh, funnels here, and pop that down there. Let's see if it actually does a good job. Andesite's gone in the right place. <gasps> it's actually doing it. Oh, good. Excellent. Now, if I put it on force brown, Robin, is it still going to do it right? Andesite in the middle. Come on, you can do it. No, you've given up again, haven't you? I don't know what to do. OK, andesite in the middle. Planks around the outside. Yeah, good. And then the andesite. That's oh, it's doing it. And that means we're making crushing wheels. And that also means we're going to be making 2,048 of them, which I really don't need. So I think I definitely will have a storage downgrade in this one so that we're only ever going to end up with 64. Because 2,048 crushing reels is more than anyone would ever need. And that really would eat through all of my resources. In that case, everything that can be auto-crafted has been. All we need now are straws and precision mechanisms. And precision mechanisms are pretty easy. So I'm going to set that up right here. And now I've got almost everything in place to make these precision mechanisms, but we need to be a little bit careful here. Precision mechanisms take gold sheet that has to go round the loop five times in order to be able to create the precision mechanism. And if it breaks, it could end up giving you back iron, cogs or gold sheet. That means you don't just want tons and tons and tons of gold sheet just going round and round and round. So basically, if I connect the storage system to this now, this little funnel here that's putting gold sheet on is just going to send loads and loads of gold sheet round and they're not going to have chance to just do the loop and actually get finished. So the way we fix that is to do something like what we did in our netherite factory where we've got similar systems set up and we use threshold switches. If we hop over to this one here, we've got a very similar system going on here, which is allowing on cobblestone and taking off magma blocks, but it'll only allow on cobblestone if there isn't much in here already. And that works by having a threshold switch, looking at this barrel, checking to see how much is in there. And if there's enough, it sends a signal over to this here to actually allow that out. So that's all we need to do over at our new one. And I happen to have a whole bunch of threshold switches and redstone links that I'm not using, all on the back of these storage drawers. So uh, yeah, I guess I can steal all of these now because um, they're totally useless. And that should work. I, don't, I can't remember if I need to invert it or not. I don't think I do. There's only one way to find out, and that is to plug everything in, which just means adding a bit of trim just there. And now that should start letting gold sheet out, which should start getting sorted, and it shouldn't keep letting them out. Yeah, there's no gold ingots going around, and there's only a handful of those going on. So if they actually manage to complete, they're going to get sucked up by that, and that'll let more out, as you can see. So that's working perfectly. But there is a downside to this. If the precision mechanism fails and gets turned into iron or cogs, well, it's got nowhere to go. So I also need to set that up so that it'll take those out as well. And I can do that pretty easily with a filter. We just want to accept these different items here. And although it doesn't say iron nuggets, I'm going to put those on just in case as well. And then I can replace that filter on there with that. And now that'll take anything out. What is it made here? Oh, because the iron's gone round that's failed and now it's making incomplete heat engines as well. So yeah, I need to put that on the filter too, I think. Can it take away the horrible things now? Is No, it's still not taking anything away. Oh, because they've got nowhere to go. I'm such a moron. So after a little bit of tweaking and fiddling, this thing is all working nicely. We're only allowing gold sheet out when there's not enough things on the belt for it to actually process. We're taking away all of the junk that it makes and the precision mechanisms as well. And that just means the only time this will have a problem is if it creates some sort of scrap or junk from a failure that we don't have a slot for in here. So we'll just have to keep our eyes out for that in the future and hope that we, there aren't too many items that come through. But realistically, we're not going to be running this for a long time anyway, because we've got loads of precision mechanisms now. In fact, we've got 48 in there, and I've got another whole bunch there. So we've got 130 altogether. 
I don't think we're going to run out anytime soon. And the only thing I really use them for is speed controllers, and uh, I don't make many of those. And that means all we need now is a bamboo farm to make straws. And that's going to be really easy. What about the blaze burner thing? Oh, well, we'll do, yeah, OK, we've still got to do that, but um, I don't really want to do that here. Hmm. So I've added a couple more things to this system, bones and bone meal, and we're actually going to crush the bones here to make bone meal, and I've also added bones to the little export filter over here, so any in the system will get dragged over here to keep the supply up. So we need a little setup to make the bone meal from the bones, and then we can use that bone meal to grow the bamboo to make the straws. So here's how our little bamboo farm's going to work. Bearing in mind we don't need much bamboo because we're only using it to make straws and we're never going to need millions of those. We're going to grow the bamboo using the deploy that's going to have bone meal in it. We're going to saw it down and this backpack with the magnet upgrading is going to pick it all up and shove it back into the storage system. So that's nice and easy. Then we just need to crush the bone meal and get all of this wired up. And to make the bone meal, if we mill down bones, we'll get three bone meal plus 25% chance to get three more and a little bit of white dye too. Whereas if we crush them, we'll get exactly the same. So we might as well use a milling machine. And in order to do that, we'll just have yet another one of those with yet another shooter on with the milling machine on with the shoot on with one of those on and that's that set up as well so all we need is power and that's it job done it's not very tidy is it I could probably make that a bit better and there we go we have a fantastic little bone mealy bamboo-y thingy farm thing going on here taking the bones crushing them down growing the bamboo and chopping it down picking it all up and it's an infinite cycle that'll never ever end this is wonderful and what's really good about this is that we're still not making any straws. We need to make straws. OK, it's, it's straw time. I think we can probably just about squeeze it in next to this, to be honest, although that's not giving us a great deal of room around there, but we can fix that later. We're just going to have yet another one of those there, yet another one of those there, and one of those there, and yet another one of those there, and one of those there, and that's going to take in bamboo. That's going to be joined up there, and we just need power to that. And I bet that's power from the bottom, isn't it? Don't tell me it's power from the bottom. No, it's not. Where, the, where do you put power into this? Where's the power? It's just from the side. I guess it's from the side. OK, I have used these before. I just never really paid attention to how they're powered. A bit of chain drive like that. Is that going to work? There we go. Rolling mill. And now we should be making straws. We are. We're now making straws. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a mess, but it's all working. And this platform probably wants extending out a bit. So we've actually got somewhere to walk around. And that is it. Everything that we need to make every single item out of Create at the press of a button, just hopping into my inventory, choosing the thing I want to build, and then clicking that and realizing we've still got no brass. We never got any brass. But don't worry, it will come. As soon as everything else is done, it will be done. But at the moment, it's using all of that brass for other things. So once we've got 2,048 brass hands, <laughs> then the brass will start backing up, which will probably happen next time I log in. Because don't forget, this whole thing is on a server that's running 24-7, so all of these things are just going to accrue overnight while I'm in bed. And speaking of bed, it's definitely bedtime. So all that's left to do is build our little blaze burnery crushy thing to make the blaze powder to help us with the redstone situation. And build an entire factory around all of this stuff, of course, decorate it and make it look nice and sort the exterior and all that sort of thing, which could take some time. Time. And because we haven't got much time left in this episode, and because our redstone machine's still chugging away making redstone, and we've still got absolutely tons of blaze powder in the system, and 76,000 blaze rods still in my inventory, I think we're going to leave the blaze burner thing for another time, and I'm just going to focus on doing this factory right now. In fact, in three, two, one. So there we are, a complete factory. Now I've tried to keep the create aesthetic. We've got the oranges from the copper casing and the copper pipes. We've got the spruce and the metal from the andesite casing and the andesite stuff. 
We've got these big cogs on the side of the building, which I think that one's okay, but that one looks a bit weird. I kind of think it works. Down here, we've got a whole bunch of different create items from all of the things that we'll be able to make from this factory. And inside, not much has changed. But before we go inside, on the roof, we've got some big old fans that you can see from inside that also let daylight through. A couple of windows, a bit of junk on this one here, and this big old chimney above the power station there. So let's head inside and see what's new and different in there. And the answer is not a lot, really. It's pretty much the same. Obviously, we've now got a ceiling in. We've got some lights. We've got these big old fans above. And no, they're not powered, which is a bit of a shame, but it'll do. We've obviously got our storage system. And I've put some walls around that so it sort of matches in a little bit better. And then we've got this brick building around where the power station is around the actual factory itself again not much has changed other than a few of these girders we've got some stairs going up to the top floor and we've got some lights on everywhere as well so we can actually see what we're doing and upstairs is pretty much the same as downstairs i guess apart from this little bit of catwalk here so that you can sort of see what's going on i guess but i've just noticed there is one thing that i'm missing and that is railings on the side of these stairs that we need otherwise we're going to fall off so let's just chuck those on there quickly there we go. That's that job done. I can never fall off these stairs. Oh, okay. Maybe the railings are not particularly good, but they'll do. And this has been running for a little while now, so we're pretty much maxed out on everything we've got, except for, as you can guess, brass. We still haven't got any brass. We've hardly got any brass sheets. We've nearly got enough of the brass hands, though. And I don't know why I need 2,048 of them, but I'm just going to let it go now. And because we've got no brass and because this has been crafting so many things, we actually completely ran out of tough and diorite, apparently. So that's why it's going really, really slowly now, because it's having to craft one diorite, then it can craft one tough, then it can get a little bit of zinc from that. So this entire factory is going to take a long time before it's actually caught up with all of the things it needs to build. But once it has done that, tough will start coming through in higher quantities and so will the brass and everything will be good. Just like the end of this episode is really good. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.